What up, players? Warboss Tampa in his mug. Welcome to the final video, the second and final video on how to paint this dwarf berserker. So, the colors you're gonna need are Fire Dragon Bright, Troll Slayer Orange, Bugman's Glow, Rackhearth Flesh, Gehenna's Gold, Storm Vermin Fur, Wild Rider Red, and I love this guy's pose. Corn Red, and is that it? I think there's a couple more. Yeah, there we go. Gla uh, Art Coat for any kind of gloss varnish. Ceramite White, and Zandri Dust. Now, this actually, I realized when I was doing this intro video that um, I hadn't finished painting the little fur trim on his boots there so I'm just going back and giving that another highlight. Now you'll notice that I didn't highlight his boots after doing the brown wash and uh, that's just a personal preference of mine. If you want to go back over with your Mornfang brown to highlight the boots then you can. You'll also notice that I didn't do a highlight for the axe and I didn't even do a shade for the axe as well and uh, that's just a personal preference. So Stegadon Scale Green is what we're gonna do the tattoos with. Okay, so this is where we're picking off. You'll notice that the, uh, from what you're looking at, the beard, Troll Slayer Orange is the color you're gonna use. The beard is half painted up, half highlighted. That's because I just wanted to see if I could uh, achieve the effect that I wanted, and I saw that I could. And it's very tricky because there's lots of bright orangey colors so, um, really it just depends on the look you're going for. The look that I'm going for with this uh, Troll Slayer Orange is a orange kind of beard and hair look with red shading in the recesses. And you'll notice that it's a little different from the Games Workshop ones. If you look at the Games Workshop Troll Slayers and their Epi Metal Galleries, uh, they don't have red in the resources. There is more of a yellowish orange, um, beige kind of Raiklin flesh tone kind of shading. And that, there's nothing wrong with that. I think personally, I find the red more interesting. It creates a little bit more of a depth to see the color transition from a very rich red to an orange, even almost up to a yellow in the highlights, which you'll notice when we add the fire dragon bright. So here I'm painting on the strands of the beard and you'll notice that the beard is braided. I kind of wanted to go with this model not only because he's got that awesome middle finger pose but also because he's got a braided beard and this is something that some of the I think some of the Games Workshop troll slayers have but there's a technique to painting beards and highlighting them back up that is gonna really make them pop and the way that I'm doing it is I'm following the direction of the lines on the braids so this is gonna take a little bit of extra time only a couple more seconds and holding the model at a certain angle so it's gonna really help if you've got like I use this piece of cork with the um, poster tack on it and that help allows me to turn the model into any sort of direction that's comfortable for my right hand to paint on and now I'm going to the mohawk here at the top and uh, my, my whole kind of thought process for painting and highlighting the mohawk is that I'm going to really brighten the tips there and you can see I'm using my hand almost as uh, a palette along with the wet palette I've got right next to me uh, I found that using your hand to kind of thin down the paints and um, kind of take most of the paint off the brush last minute is, is a big help so don't be afraid to use, you know, the palm of your hand or uh, your thumb or, or anything like that to get the, the paint off of your paintbrush and give you the right consistency that you want. And here we go, I'm just, I'm really trying to go from, for the, the tips of the hair first, kind of frost the tips and give it a little bit of that highlighted look. And then um, once you're sure how far the highlight goes, then you can kind of stretch it down towards the, the roots. 
um, but I found that by starting at the tips you can really see okay is the color right is uh, do I have the right color combination there and is it going to work and once you figure out yep it's gonna work then you'll notice that I'm lengthening the highlight color and pushing it further towards the base if I started at the bottom at the base then most of my paint would clump up there into the recesses and it would get rid of all of that awesome red shading that Caraberg Crimson provided for me. So I'm starting at the tips and just working my way down. And again this video series is dedicated to my July painting challenge participant Fulcrum Starbinder, awesome guy. Uh, I definitely suggest you check out his channel if you haven't yet, I'll put a link below in the description. So here at the top, I'm just kind of brushing straight down the middle. And here we go with the other side, again starting at the tips and pushing our way down. I'm, I'm not sure if it was this side or the other side, but one of the, one of the sides of this mohawk I think I got a little bit over ambitious with and got a little bit too bright, so I went back later with some watered down Caraberg Crimson. Uh, it's really you know, just a, a matter of how how much detail and how much work do you want to put into the, these models. These are all very basic beginner techniques, but um, if, if you use them enough, then it'll give you an, a very nice tabletop quality, easily achievable, and you know, when you've got a whole unit of these guys, then uh, it's going to look great from across the table. So you can already see from, from right there how the, the orange transitions to the red really nicely. Alright, what am I doing next? So now we're adding the second highlight which is Fire Dragon Bright. Fire Dragon Bright is, if you look at uh, Troll Slayer Orange, it had a little bit more reddish tinge to it. Fire Dragon Bright has actually more of a, a yellowish orange color, which is fantastic because we're transitioning again from red to red orange to orange to now we're going to an orange yellow or a yellowish orange color if you want and I didn't do this because um, I, I kind of want to end up with this bright orange color but if you want you could also go all the way up to yellow and highlight do your very very top highlights with like an irreal yellow and um, I actually tested that out on a, a test model and it looked really pretty nice but I think for for our purposes I'm just gonna play play it safe but uh, yeah don't be afraid to go all the way up to yellow with your highlights it'll really make that orange pop especially with the depth you've got going down to the red got a f um, frothy mug of delicious beverage next to me so uh, always always record with a beverage I find that doing this kind of tutorials is actually easier for me because I kind of paint do a lot of my painting at night and the lady boss is asleep in the next room and so um, painting and recording at the voice at the same time uh, has gotten to be a little bit uh, problematic and hectic for me so I found that just recording video and then doing the voiceover on my own time is uh, a lot easier for me so we'll see how many more tutorials I can do and also you'll notice that I've added the music back in uh, it's actually Paul Pham recommended that or I suggested that I do it and yeah why not we'll see if I get any complaints and people are like ah this music sucks go back to just talking then I might do that but uh, he's a very vocal supporter of having the music in and I always like the relaxing music it was really uh, easygoing and calming and soothing if you're not already listening to your you know death metal or whatever then uh, it's a nice background to the voiceover all right, now the uh, gotta stop saying. Uh, the trick with highlighting is you want to build off the highlights you've already done. And since we're going with the second highlight now, we did the shading, 
We highlighted up once with Troll Slayer Orange, and now we're going with Fire Dragon Bright. This is our second highlight. We really want to only touch the center's areas of of the parts that we've already done. So I'm looking for where the Troll Slayer Orange is most prominent, and then slightly adding, uh, gently adding the Fire Dragon Bright in. And you can see right there the awesome kind of transition you can get by going from that deep red to orange to this yellowish orange color. Ah, oh, it's really beautiful. And um, for your mohawks and your dwarf troll slayers, it's gonna look fantastic. Okay, so the other side painting kind of staying towards the tips, you'll notice. Keeping that red down near the base. Oh, you'll also notice that I've um, painted the tartan pattern at some point, <laughs> and it was basically following this, the tartan uh, tutorial that I did earlier, a couple years back, and so I'll also link that at the bottom. Yeah, here we go, Carabird Crimson. I took a look at my highlights and I thought, oh, I think this one side is a little bit too too thick with the with the yellow. So what I'm doing is basically taking some watered down Carabur Crimson and I'm starting at the base and I'm pulling the color up towards the top. But I'm not trying not to hit the whole thing, I'm just kind of trying to stick towards the bottom. So you've got the really highlighted yellow spiky bits at the top and red in the resource uh, recesses all the way down at the base. Also go with the blood letter gate uh, glaze for that if you want. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm gonna highlight the skin with a mix of Bugman's Glow and Rec Heart Flesh. For this, I'm going with the one-to-one -one mixture, which means that uh, when I'm mixing it in my wet palette, the same amount of Bugman's Glow is how much I use for Rec Heart Flesh. And I, I only dipped my brush in um, to my into the pot very. Uh, very very lightly because you don't need that much so once you cut it down with a little bit of water on your wet palette then uh, it really a, a little bit goes a long way so here I am just painting the highlights on now the uh, Bugman's Glow with the uh, Rackarth Flesh mixture shaded with this Raikman flesh shade creates a great great foundation to work up it really makes the model look like he's been out in the sun and uh, when you're highlighting with the one-to-one -one mixture here it is just fantastic you leave that Raikman flesh shade in the in the recesses and we just kind of build up there. So as you can see, whenever I'm painting something organic like uh, musculature or um, anything like that, I'm trying to follow the the lines of the muscles so like for the shoulder muscle I'm trying to paint from top to bottom for the collarbone I'm trying to do a horizontal for this part here I'm painting up by the head I'm trying to go from front to back and 
uh, that way I, I don't really like the way a dry brush on skin looks I think it just looks silly it looks dusty and um, not really clean I like this more blended transition for muscles and for for organic organic things like flesh and body parts so I think I'm I sh show the camera right here that like if I'm painting the hand then I'm going horizontally up across the knuckles if I'm painting the leg then I'm trying to follow the the calf muscles and the thigh muscles going from top to bottom with a slight angle in it and when I'm painting like the arm then for the back here I'm painting the back I'm kind of just following the the sculpted muscles of the figure and that gives you the best chance to create a nice uh, natural look to the body and uh, yeah I think it's the best the best way to paint or highlight actually so following the muscles following uh, here I think I'm painting the hand again I'm kind of focusing the highlights on the knuckles and dragging the highlighted paint down. Boop! Right on that middle finger. Ugh! So rude. This berserker. Yeah, I think somebody asked about using these figures in a Games Workshop game. Yeah, this, I don't think they should. you should have any problem with it. Unless you're playing at a strict Games Workshop store. Corn Red now for the gems. Um, I don't see any problem with it. Like there's a bunch of guys who use proxies and well not even proxies, they're just you know, alternate range figures. And like at this point there are some uh, fantastic companies out there that make not only alternate sculpts and figures but uh, conversion kits for Games Workshop models. So if you look at um, some of the different companies out there like Cyborg, Max Mini, uh, they've got a lot of great options. That's, I mean, that's just two of, like, there's a whole ocean of companies out there that are doing, uh, that, that create products that you can use, like, alternate sculpt heads and, and arms and things to really uh, make your models look pretty cool. So yeah, these avatars of, avatars of War models are definitely meant to be played as Games Workshop Dwarf Troll Slayers. And uh, if I was the owner of your local games shop, and if it wasn't a Games Workshop, I would say, yeah, by all means, go ahead. Let's, you know, kind of encourage some, um, get a little publicity out there for some other companies. I think you can see I've, I've already painted the tartan pattern by the time this clip is running so you can see that <clears throat> that pattern on the back right there I love it it's that that blue with some uh, reddish brown lines and green lines in there it's a fun pattern to paint Oh boy, I'm sorry, I'm yawning so much. I hate when people yawn in their videos and I'm so tired uh, recording this that... I'm sorry, I can't help myself. Okay, so from Corn Red, I usually go to Mephiston Red. I couldn't find it though, so I decided, you know what, that's okay. I'll just go straight up to the Wild Rider Red, which is usually my third highlight. Um, but I noticed that these gems, except for the ones on the bracer here on its left hand, the gems are pretty small, so you're not going to really notice the transition between colors too much. But uh, if you have Mephist on red, I would suggest highlighting your gems with that first, and then hitting it with Wild Rider Red. Wild Rider Red has a little bit of orange to it. It's actually more like a, a bright red orange than than a red color, which is perfect for highlighting your gems. Sorry, I'm um, missing the focus of the camera a little bit. All right, and the last thing you're doing is taking your Ceramite White, and we're going to paint a little dot in the top corners of the gems. 
that are in the black area, the black region. So uh, if you've never painted gems before, um, um, forgive me if you have, and this is uh, you know, going over something you already know, but for, for new painters out there or painters who are unfamiliar with painting gems, you want to paint the entire gem black first, which is what we did at the end of the first video. And then you want to make like a crescent moon shape, uh, leaving a little bit of black in the upper left corner, but you want to do a crescent moon starting from the upper right and then sweeping down to the lower right and then to the lower left of the gem. And then with each successive highlight, you want to make a smaller crescent moon within that so that it looks like the color is slowly transitioning, but you've still got that black uh, pocket in the upper left hand corner of the gem. And then with your white, you're just dotting that corner really lightly. You don't want to have too much paint on your paintbrush because you don't want to see a big glob of white paint. You just want a little slash or a little dot of white paint. And then what you're doing here with the art coat is you are uh, going to create that natural shine. So the white dot is um, almost like an optical illusion in that it uh, creates a little area of focus for your eye. And you can't really see it, but I do it on the gemstones on this guy's bracer right here on his left hand and on the gemstone right in the front of his belt but the glass coat you want to the art coat you want to paint on every gem whether or not you put that white dot on because what art coat does is it creates a shiny reflective surface that um, the person looking at the model is going to see no matter which angle he's viewing the model from okay Gehenna's gold is our highlight for the gold color And um, Gehenna's gold is like a, a yellowish gold color, which is good because Balthazar gold is more of like a dark red gold. So when you highlight Balthazar gold with Gehenna's gold, then it creates a very nice rich color. If, you, if I was painting an elf, then I would highlight even further with Auric armor gold because that's a very, very yellow, it's like bright yellow gold color. And that's perfect for elves who have you know really fine jewelry but the dwarves their gold is is uh, more rich like straight from the earth and um, so highlighting up to Gehenna's gold is usually the best way to go yeah if you're gonna paint up a highlight for your axe then I would go with rune fang steel it's a very bright silver that can line the metal really nicely I just I, I could think I did decided not to do it. I thought it looked fine without it. Okay, here we go. Storm firm and fur. What am I doing with this? I think Yeah, I'm going to mix it with Bugman's glow. So what you, what you're going to do is 75% storm firm and fur, 25% Bugman's glow, and we're going to create a little bit of a shadow for his head. Almost make like a stubble for his head as if um, he hasn't been shaving his head every single day for the last couple of days. He's been knee deep in the thick of battle, hasn't had time to rest, hasn't had time to um, do anything other than reapply the pig fat to his mohawk to keep it nice and spiky, but um, he hasn't been able to shave his head in a couple days. So uh, all I'm doing is I'm, I'm creating almost a glaze. Once you have your mix, it's uh, three parts, again, three parts Storm Vermin Fur to one part Bugman's Glow, then you're going to add a lot of water to it, and then you're just going to uh, paint it right where the hairline would be. The uh, tricky thing is that usually with, with men um, who are still, who still have hair and a hairline, you want to push the hairline actually farther back than you think you might have to go and it goes all the way down to the back but um, a lot of people don't realize that the male female too hairline is uh, farther back than than you might think it is and you might <laughs> you'll notice this especially if you go to see like a high school or a community theater play and some of the hair and makeup people like to push the wigs like really down far on the foreheads and uh, you watch in the audience and you're like, oh, that, that wig does not look good because it's pushed too far forward. Uh, I don't know why I decided to share that with you, but um, basically all I'm saying is 
when you do your hairline for your models, you kind of want to push it a little bit further back than you think you need to. You see how it creates that nice little stubble look? Um, adding that flesh, adding the 25% of Bugman's Glow flesh color to your Storm Vermin Fur will uh, dull it down and make it not look so, so uh, stark and gray. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm watering down some Bugman's Glow with a little bit of Storm Vermin Fur in it and I'm painting it over almost like a glaze over the stubble and when you water it down and you just paint it over then it uh, it does this really nice blending clouding effect where it dulls down the darkness and makes it uh, look more natural okay kiddos now we're gonna do the tattoos so I'm using Stegadon scale green for this and I've also got my computer open right next to me while I'm painting and I've uh, looked up Dwarf Troll Slayer and you'll see a lot of great art official art from like the Warhammer Age of Reckoning um, video game and a bunch of different concept art and art from codexes or army books rather and you'll notice that their troll slayers their tattoos are a, a kind of a mix of like the Celtic um, straight lines and uh, also like curves and points which I, I don't know could be Celtic as well um, I'm not sure but I, I love how like when you look at Gotrex tattoos they're uh, curved and sharp and there's uh, like a variety of different designs and patterns so I'm just going for a very random looking uh, design here and you want to make sure you water down your Stegodon scale green so it's not going on in a thick line. You're almost uh, trying to do like a very thin watered down paint and uh, you'll see my paintbrush here is definitely the wrong size. I should have gone with a, a fine detail brush and I think I was just so excited to get going with these tattoos that uh, I wasn't really thinking but it, it does kind of screw me up a little bit. Uh, here when I'm doing these dots and I think somewhere else the uh, the paint just gets everywhere on on the model but at this point I'm just so excited I'm like awesome oh, tattoos if you're gonna do any kind of tattoo like ogre kingdoms tattoos or um, if, even if you want to give your empire swarthy Nordlanders uh, some some awesome nautical tattoos then I think watered down Stegadon scale green on Caucasian flesh is really a good way to go. Yeah, I think I'm just going for for like curves and points and a sharp, distinctive lines. Over here on the on the right hand arm, I decided to go with a a band, which is two lines straight across the bicep, with a, a pattern inside, kind of like a Celtic uh, interweaving pattern. But uh, because there is no way that I could really do that, what I just decided to do was little X's inside. So it's it's definitely not the traditional looking armband of a tattoo, but that's uh, still, I think it's it came out nice. And I'm going down the neck again, at the side of the collarbone, going down the chest, adding in just swirls and swoops and loops. And a lot of fun, definitely. When, when you get to the tattoos, you're, you're going to have a lot of fun. I also decided to add some tattoos on the hand. Sticking up that middle finger. So I was like looking at the computer right now, like what am I going to do? I don't, I've never done a hand tattoo before. What can I do that's suitably, you know, dwarfy? So I think I just decided to end up with some, some spikes coming out of the bracer and some X's and uh, just a very random design and I think I ended up not being very happy with it but it's just uh, some designs coming down down from the forearm there and it's going to go up his hand towards the middle finger and just kind of uh, circling around the wrist there.
So just like a regular tattoo that you get for the rest of your life. Oh, and here I'm painting one tattoo going down the forehead, down his right eye. If you feel like, oh my god, what was I thinking? You regret the tattoo that you painted on your dwarf, then don't worry. The trick to covering up your tattoo is basically taking a color of the skin that you just did and uh, just painting, painting it around the highlighted color. So uh, I'm not going to go with a one-to-one -one mix of Bugman's Glow and Rackard Flesh to fix it. I'm going with almost like a, um, a three-to-one of Bugman's Glow to, to Rackard Flesh. So I'm going to go a little bit heavier with the Bugman's Glow, and uh, the reason why I'm going to do this when I'm mixing it up in my in my wet palette is just to show the um, the, the depth in the skin. If you painted the highlight next to the tattoo, the um, the eye might get fooled into uh, thinking that it's part of the design or that the the skin highlights up to the de the design. But by creating it a little bit darker. Um, what you're doing is actually creating the illusion that uh, the skin is blended around the tattoo a little bit darker. And I, for me, I think it works. So here I'm starting with the, the wrist tattoo. And I think I, I clean up a couple other places. So that's all. I did not do the base. I didn't get a chance to get to the base and uh, you'll notice because of the beginning of the video I didn't do the little fur trim on the boots, but that is basically it. How to paint a dwarf troll slayer or berserker if you're using the avatars of war figures. Thank you for watching. I hope this video series has been helpful for you, especially you dwarf players. And um, thank you so much for supporting my channel. Don't forget to hit the like button if you haven't yet. and. Uh, leave me a little comment down below and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks again for watching and latest players, thumbs up.